And this week, you're going to be hearing a lot about uh, Ellen Greenberg, who will be uh, talking with her parents uh, every day this week uh, in the uh, afternoon. We'll be dropping podcasts uh, with that conversation around 6 p.m. Central every single day here on the feed. Uh, hearing the absolute horror that they they went through and their extreme struggles, I'd call it horror as well, trying to get justice for their daughter who was stabbed brutally 20 times, several times in the back and head. Yet uh, Philadelphia uh, medical uh, examiner ruled it a suicide at the request of the Philadelphia PD. Uh, and, Excuse me a minute. Bullshit. Yeah, it's 100% <laughs> bullshit. It is. I mean, it, it's one of the most obvious bullshit cases out there that yeah. they just refuse to touch and to correct and to go back and say, you know what? We fucked this up. Or you know what? Maybe someone was getting paid off, uh, which is where my assumption seems to go. Uh, this 911 call is uh, what happened moments after uh, Ellen Greenberg was, quote unquote, found uh, in the apartment that uh, she was sharing with her fiance at the time, Samuel Goldberg. He's the one who got in there and uh, found the body and then called 911. He made a claim that he broke down the door. That's the big story that we've heard for quite some time, that he broke the door latch down uh, and because it was latched from the inside and got in. He, he said there was a witness. The witness said otherwise. Uh, and there really isn't a lot of evidence, and there really never has been a lot of evidence to show that he truly broke that door down with the latch attacked. Uh, it would have been a very different scene had that truly been part of the story. But, hey, it makes for a nice part of the story. Now, I should say Samuel has never been charged with anything. Uh, this murder was never investigated as a murder. It was looked at as a suicide. Uh, and Samuel has moved on with his life. He's now remarried. Uh, and I believe he works in television. Uh, but uh, that's that's where that sits. You can hear our conversation, like I said, with the... Uh, with the Greenberg family about their interactions with him after this all took place or their lack thereof interactions with him uh, after this all took place and their frustrations with just simply trying to get the cause of death adjusted to be what it should be, either undetermined or homicide. But that's been a very sticky and money-ridden subject uh, of the people who need to change that, who won't. So we're bringing a lot of awareness to it uh, this week on the show. There's a petition you can sign if you want to try and do your part. There's a phone number you can call uh, as well as uh, email to make your voice be heard. You can find those in the episode description uh, of this show. We're going to go through the 911 call. They usually tells us a lot about the mental state of an individual or emotional state of an individual. Uh, so put yourself in the position of being out, working out, coming back home to find the woman that you love, that you are engaged to, dead, with 20 stab wounds. Let's go to the call. Oh, I, 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 need, I need a murder. Now, I just, I just walked into my apartment. My fiance is on the floor with blood everywhere. What is the address? 4601 Flat Rock Road. Please come help. 4601. Now. Flat Rock Road. Is this a house or apartment? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. It's an apartment. It's an apartment. What apartment number? <laughs> please hurry, Where please. Is she bleeding from? She, I don't know. I can't tell. She's... No. So you have to calm yourself down in order to get you some help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She, okay. I don't know. I, I'm looking... Then the switch is flipped. So he go, He kind of goes from the, I'm going to kind of talk inaudibly every random few moments and then... Okay, sorry. I'm good. At her right now. She, I don't, I can't see anything. She didn't, there's nothing broken. She's bleeding. Ellie. You don't know where she's bleeding from, can you? Ellie. Blood coming from? It's, I think her head. I think she hit her head, I think. I think but it's, it's everywhere. Okay, so it's everywhere. Think she might have fallen. Do you know yeah. what happened? She, she, she may have slipped his blood on the, on the table. Her, her face is a little purple. Okay, hold on for rescue for her. Keep in mind, 20 stab wounds. 20 stab wounds, and wasn't the knife still in her? Yes, there's still a knife protruding from her, but she might have slipped and hit her head. You know, it's a little purple. Ugh. Continuing on. Stay on the phone. Philadelphia 
Inside apartment 842, what's the address? No, uh, 4601 Flat Rock Road, please hurry. 4601 Flat Rock? Yes. What's wrong? My, my, I just, my, I went downstairs to go work out. I came back up. The door was latched. Notice this is interesting. In an emergency situation, you don't necessarily, you know, have to tell your whole alibi. All you need to do is say, my fiance is on the ground, yeah. unresponsive, not, uh, I went downstairs to go work out. I came back up. The door was latched. My fiance's inside, uh, like he's doing. It's so well, I, I here here. I'm struggling with something because. She's on the floor and, and her face looks a little bit purple. At this point, m most people, and I'm doing air quotes, most people would be, what do I do? What, what, what should I be doing? What, what can I do mm -hmm. to help her until you, are you on your way? Are you coming? You know, that frantic, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? And he's telling a story. He's telling a story. And I got to say, in my opinion, this does not sound all that authentic. No. Now, now I'm not saying he's the killer. I'm not because that would, you know, and he's not being charged with anything, but I'm saying this sounds a little bit uh, detached uh, from the situation. <laughs> and I mean, that, that can mean multiple things. It can be mean that you're the one who did it and you already know what happened, but you have to play dumb. It could also mean he really didn't give a shit about his fiance and was emotionally detached and just doesn't care. Uh, that could be it too. It'd be a really cold, you know, bad thing, but, uh, it, it also, it doesn't necessarily mean he is the killer, but it certainly doesn't look good, uh, at all hearing this. Let's continue. My fiance's inside. She wasn't, she wasn't answering. So after about a half hour, I decided to break it down. I see her now just on the floor with blood. She's not, she's not responding. Okay. Is she breathing? She, I can't. Look at her chest. I need you to calm down, and I need you to look at her chest. It's really. I don't think she. I really don't think she is. Listen to me. Someone's on the way. Look at her chest. Is she flat on her back? <laughs> She's on her back. So okay, I bring her. Look at her chest and tell me if it's going up and down, up and down. I don't see her moving. Okay. Do you know how to do CPR? I don't. Okay. I can tell you what to do. Okay. Until they get there, I want you to keep her. Flat oh on her God. Back. Hello. Yeah, hi, okay. Are you willing to do CPR with me over the phone so they can... I, get, I, I have to, right? Okay. That <laughs> right there. What? Wait, what? <laughs> I have to, right? <laughs> oh, my God, Tony. No, there's an option. You don't have to. You can just uh, lay there and watch her continue to die, even though she is already dead at this point. So I have to, right? <laughs> wow, something about this is just really, really weird. It's a staged crime scene, number one. Everybody who's looked at this looks at it as, I mean, the way that blood was dripping down her head, it was dripping the wrong way when they found her. Um, there, there's so much of this where things were set up to look a certain way, but really weren't, including post-mortem stab wounds. Let's continue. Uh, to get her flat on her back, bare her chest, okay? You want to rip her shirt off. Okay. Okay. Kneel down by her side. Oh my God, Ellie, please. Listen, listen. You can't freak out, sir. Because okay, I'm trying not. I'm stuff. trying not. Her shirt won't come off. It's a zipper. Rip oh my off. God, she stabbed herself. Where? She threw <gasps> a knife. Oh no, her knife's sticking out. Uh, what? What? There's a knife sticking out of her heart. Oh, she stabbed herself. I can't, I guess so. I don't know where she fell on it. I don't know. Okay, well, don't touch it. Okay, so I'm just, I just let her down. here now. I mean, what do I do? No, I mean, you can't. If the knife is at her chest, it's going to be kind of hard for you to do CPR at this time. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Police. <laughs> just the demeanor. Oh, okay. my goodness. Oh, gosh. Oh, so, shucks. Now, if let me let me put people in this scenario. You walk in. Your loved one is on the floor in a pool of blood. You're about to do CPR to see if you can revive them because you see they're not breathing. You find stab wounds as you peel their shirt open to to find their sternum to do proper compressions. And, a knife. and you see stab wounds. And the first thing you say is she stabbed herself instead of, oh, my God, she's been stabbed. Your yeah. first response is somebody fucking stabbed my loved one. Well, how, not she yeah. stabbed herself. Exactly. I mean, how often do people stab themselves? Number one. Yeah, exactly.
she fell on the knife. Yeah, because that happens a lot, too. There just happened to be a, 20 times? a large knife protruding from the floor, which she fell on 20 times. Yeah, that seems. And, and well, oh, it's, you know, he's in shock. It's a. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this guy doesn't sound like he's all that much in shock. It sounds fairly just, I, I, calculated. I think if you walk point. in and see this, your first response is going to like be wondering if there's somebody in the house because somebody else had to have done this. Why would you turn it around and say that she did it to herself? Because he's not a good actor. Well, I, there you go. Uh, I mean, or, or he's just a complete fucking idiot. It, it, it's one of the two, either not a good actor or he's just a bumbling moron that comes up with these sort of ideas and says them out loud and sounds extremely incriminating. Keep in mind, never been charged with a single crime, and this is the 911 call. I guess the police are assuming he's a bumbling idiot. While the rest of the world listens and goes, hmm, I don't know about that assumption. Let's continue. Switch operator. 277. Is someone coming here? Yes, they are. You said 4601 Flat Rock, right? Yes. Okay, someone's on the way. And the knife is still inside? Wait, your what? The knife is still inside of her? Yes, I didn't take it out. Is it her chest or what area? It's, it's in her heart. chest. It's like, it, looks like it's, it looks like it's right in her heart. Well, okay, someone's on the way out here. How do you know it's right in her heart? Number one. I mean, anywhere in the chest, I guess, could be kind of like your heart. But, but how did he not see this knife at any point until it was time to do CPR? I just Why did it take three minutes for him to realize there's a knife protruding from the chest of the woman that he's on top of? He's about to oh do CPR God. from? What do you, you mean? That's weird. That sounds foul, like foul play or something bizarre. Yeah. Continue. Okay, just get oh, my God. Oh, my God. How okay. old is she? She's 27. 27. And there's no sign of life at all? No, no, arm. no, please don't be. What? Been trying to her arm and tell me she responds to pain. She's. Ellie! She's not, she's not. Her arm and her hands are still warm. I don't know if that means. But there's blood every. I mean. I know, but you can't. And the knife is still inside of her. How far? Can you see how far it went in? It looks pretty deep. Okay. It looks three. I mean, it's a long knife. Don't touch anything. Yeah, don't touch well, anything. Number one, how does he really know it's a long knife if it's stuck in her? You, I mean, I don't know. I oh, mean, God. I didn't even think of that. That's another question. Like, it could be a short-bladed knife if it's really deep in her. I don't know how you really know the length of the knife unless it's out. That might be another question to ask. And I, again, if it's a long knife, how did you not see it? Yeah. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. This is re I can't believe this, though. No, wait, it was just you there with her? We, yeah, we're the only ones here. And she ran in the door, you said, latched it shut? No, no, I, I, I went downstairs to work out, and I, when I came back up, the door was latched. Oh. Like, it was, you know, it wasn't like, it was, you know, it was, like, locked from the inside. And I'm yelling... You know, so I was, so I'm, well, you know, was your house broken yelling. into? No, 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 no. So there's no sign of a break-in? No, no sign of a break-in at all. I mean, there will be when you get here, because I had to break the latch, but to get in. Now, wouldn't you want to make it look like a break-in at the very least? Yeah. If you are the murderer, and I'm not saying he is, but I'm just saying if the murderer is around, maybe... Make it look like a break-in if you're... Yeah. Uh, it seems like a very bad way of covering something up uh, or looking like a hero. Uh, you broke that latch down, found her dead. I mean, it could be a pity play uh, as well. Uh, if we were to play pretend that maybe he could possibly be a murderer, uh, but we don't know that and he's never been charged with anything. Okay, 4601 Flat Rock, and this is a house, right? It's an apartment. Fire record apartment... Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Thank you. And his uncle happens to be a very high-powered attorney with a lot of connections in Philadelphia that, uh, you know, you connect a few dots there if you really want to, and you can go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. kind of weird, mm -hmm. kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, he showed up at the house the next day and took all of the digital equipment, all the computers, all of the phones. Uh, he was not allowed to do that. That's actually technically uh, <laughs> illegal. Uh, it was be stolen property if you're taking it away from the scene. 
Uh, but it was uh, never looked at as a crime scene to begin with uh, in terms of like a homicide. Uh, and then that was finally returned many months later uh, to the family uh, after, you know, chain of custody being broken a gazillion times. And, you know, I'm going to assume a lot of things wiped off of them, uh, but that would have been a great place to find some information. But, you know, attorney uncle just shows up being the good guy, taking that stuff in because that's what you do in a situation like that. You take all the electronics sure. <laughs> from the home. Oh my God. As the attorney, you just do that. Cause every time you have every attorney I talk to, it's always like, let's go to the house and get the electronics while it's an active crime scene. I've never heard of such a thing. It's so. Cause it's insane. What? Well, there's a couple of people who need to be charged here. At least looked at. At the very least looked at. At the very least looked at. Wow. Let's continue on. I guess that's the end of it. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, the 911 phone call uh, from uh, Ellen Greenberg, uh, rather about Ellen Greenberg, made by Sam Goldberg uh, when he allegedly came back from working out and finding her dead in the home. I, it, the, from the very moment I laid eyes on this story, it has just, it's sitting in the pit of my stomach. There is nothing about this that makes any sense. And now hearing that 911 call, I, I just, there's no way that you wouldn't see this knife. There's no way. I, I don't like the fact that he turned it around and said she stabbed herself. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck says that about a, a stabbing victim? Yeah. Who says that? And, you know, when I was talking with, uh, the parents, uh, Ellen's parents, uh, and like I said, you'll hear that interview all this week here on the podcast uh, in the evening. We drop it around 6 p.m. every day. Uh, one of the things that they uh, they pointed out uh, about uh, all of this is is just how bizarre the the circumstance was, and and and, and, and yes, the the knife sticking out and the scene itself looking very set up if you will. And, and but they're not they're not going after the killer. They're not they're not even that's not their goal right now. Their goal is simply to have her cause of death be changed to what it rightfully should be, either homicide or undetermined. They're not going after uh, anyone they suspect at this moment in time. They need that changed. That's what their goal is right now. And there is a petition online uh, with the mayor of Philadelphia on change.org. Uh, and we have the link for it. It's a very long address. So just find it in the episode description link uh, where you can sign. There's about, as of this recording, uh, almost 160,000 people who signed it. Their goal is 200,000. Um, you can sign it. And they're trying to get this in front of the, the mayor of Philadelphia and demanding that the case be re-examined. Now, will that happen? Even with a bunch of signatures, when everyone is super connected? I don't know. But there's a lot of movement on this and a lot of public outcry as of late uh, that something be done because this is completely insane. You mm -hmm. sign that petition. You can call the mayor of Philadelphia at this number, 215-686-2181. That's 215-686-2181, the phone number also in the description, as well as the email. Now, of course, emails are very easy to just filter out, and I'm going to put money on that there's probably a filter there already for this case, where it's like, I would it's like trash, go to the trash, go to the trash. So I'm not, I mean, email if you want, but I think signing that petition and blowing up their phone might be a little more effective. So... If you'd like to uh, seek justice for Ellen in a way, here's a way that you actually can, other than just going on social media and going, well, that's fucking crazy. Sign the petition and blow up the phone line. 215-686-2181. 215-686-2181. Uh, 
2181. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.